Good evening, welcome to Monday Night Live. To those of you expecting to see Stuart, no, he hasn't just grown a beard very quickly in a week. Um, Stuart is in Portugal this week uh, on one of his coaching trips. So Matt Hyatt's with me this week, so we're going to go through uh, everything golf-wise that's been going on uh, this last week or so, some interesting results. Not a lot of golf, though. No, no. It was a, I guess with the players, it's always mm. one of those that the other tours know they might not get the same viewing that they yeah. would get in a normal week. So they're always going to sacrifice things a little bit. So we'll, we'll get that covered off. Uh, obviously, welcome to Stuart's channel as well as the Precision Golf channel. Um, really, really grateful to have you all on. We've got some questions come in already. We'll crack onto those very shortly. Uh, but Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, what a man. Mm. What a man. What power of a putter, eh? I, from what I can tell, it's it's more about aim than yeah. He did the uh, he had an interview where he did say did say that he said he feels like he can actually stand over a putt and know where he's going to mm. start it. He actually has that confidence in the the alignment of the putter, which I, I think that that's a he's, he's still got a plumber neck, still like his his blade putter. So it's not whilst he's gone to a mallet, it's not like the next change. He's not gone face balanced. It, it's it's a it's a bigger putter, more alignment markings, and, and clearly that's made a big difference. I think it's a clear alignment marking, and mm. that's something that, that Phil Kenyon that he's that he started working with this year. It's something Phil's always been very strong on. You know, he was mm. influential in the design of the Versa when they when they first released that. He's he's very much been a man that's about clear and obvious alignment aids on putters making a big difference. Yeah, and, and it's getting the right style of alignment made as well for someone. And that's the thing, I mean, so I know that my eyes are better with the Versa. I'm better with a perpendicular line. I had to paint out the line on the, down the target line on my putter because I realised I was aiming at the whole left. Uh, not good. Um, but you know, fascinating, actually, since then, how much better my putting's been because I actually, uh, I could see the line clearly. It just, I just couldn't see where it was pointing. <laughs> Um, but um, there are so many variants to it, uh, variables to alignment markings, contrasts, especially when you go to tour level, we have so many markings that we just don't get access to. Um, so I think for, for him to have found something with his putter, um, the rest are probably quaking a little for the major season coming yeah, up. Yeah, it's starting to get a bit terrifying, isn't it, for this year? Especially yeah. when you also consider that, that Wyndham is working with one of the other guys within the Phil Kenyon Academy, you know, mm. the two from this week who have and to be honest, for the last few months have, have looked the best of everyone on tour, both working for the same, from the same putting academy. It says a lot about his yeah. beliefs on yeah. alignment and, and what he educates. What a lip out. What a brutal lip out. <laughs> <laughs> what a brutal way to finish, a, yeah. to finish an event, seeing that one pretty much disappear out. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the slow-mo is almost half the ball below the level of the surface. I mean, it was proper wall of death. Yeah, I think mm. he could hit that on that line a hundred times, and I think 99 mm. of those would uh, would mm. fall, and he happened to get the one that stayed out. See, see, if they hadn't cut the edge of that hole so well, <laughs> it, would, it would have just taken the edge of it. Um, I mean, the only other um, uh, tournament golf going on was Asian Tour. Yes, yeah, where a few of the live guys were, mm. were out to try and get some, I guess, match sharpness ready for, mm. for the next one for them at the beginning of... April in, in Florida. Yeah, and um, so David Pooge comes second to John, if that's the right pronunciation, to John Catlin. Yes. Who, he's a sneaky good golfer and he's had yeah, multiple wins globally. I mean, European Tour, uh, DP World Tour over the last couple of years. He's, he's one of these players you don't really, you see the name, you don't, he's not that recognisable, but he's, he's a good finisher. Yeah, there's a few of them. You look at that leaderboard, to be honest, mm. that there's been a few that you, I would say, forget about, to be honest. Mm. Um, just purely the nature of where they now play their golf, you, they seem to just disappear mm. off into that and then reappear every so often. But I guess that's the thing with live. If what you believe is true as to their plans over the next couple of years, that becoming their development tour, we'll see some of those names reappear mm. and almost play into the promotion, into the into the live tour for for certain events. So. We won't delve too deeply into the, the what's in the maze and this because yeah, we'll see what comes yeah, out of exactly. all these sort of meetings and plain, yeah. plain sort of flight reports we're all talking about now. Um, but uh, I mean, coming up this, this coming week at Copperhead, uh, so at the Valspar yeah, Copperhead, that's, that's always a tough course and you generally get you a see some explosions great ball there. striker when you're yeah. there. Yeah, you do see some score explosions yeah. there when you get into Snake Pit and what follows. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, Casey. One recently he's won there with New Donald in the past. I think it was Casey back to back. Did he win back to back there? Yeah. Um, so again, it's normally a good long game that wins around there. Very kind of tough tee to green. Um, so yeah, should be fun seeing that one. 
makes you think it's got Scheffler written all over again, doesn't it, really? Well, you might want to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, it's got Wyndham yeah. written yeah. on it, really, doesn't it? It's got one. You, mm. you take the game that, need, that is needed around there and it's, it points straight to one of those two yeah. again. So for betting, betting men and women amongst you, <laughs> not good odds on those two. No. So we're going to crack on to the questions. James is, uh, might have a camera on him uh, this week, but he, James is going to be feeding I the questions do. from Stuart's channel to us. So we've got the Precision Golf channel here. And then James, obviously we won't be covering the coaching, direct coaching questions, but if there's anything relating to how, potentially how equipment and technique can be affected, anything kind of equipment wise, Far in, we'll do our best to answer as much as possible. And without further ado, on to, on to the question. I had some questions in before we started. So uh, I think what we'll start off with is uh, uh, C Sunny or Cy Sunny, or however you pronounce that one. Um, but uh, he was in a couple of weeks ago and became apparently playing the wrong ball, chrome soft, as my spin numbers were too low, something we see a lot of. Um, Nick suggested a TP5, which brought the spin numbers up to where we're hoping to see them. Could we demonstrate this using a variety of balls? Well, what we will do, we'll use, we'll use a couple just to display how much difference it can make. I'll sing it. I was requested for this one. So, <laughs> Mandy, they didn't know you were on yet. No, so. I'll, uh, I'll get out the way and let you fire away. So what, um, what I'm going to do is use um, one of the, the softer core balls. I'm going to use the RCT. So we've got, a, um, got the AVX. Uh, and then going to contrast with the Pro V1X just to show the maximum change in spin. So you're going to use um, 6-iron here. And it is something where there's been a lot of talk about using you know, moderate swing speeds using softer core balls. Predominantly, they talked about ball speed with it, which actually I, I not something I've seen um, in terms of it generating noticeably more ball speed. But the distance comes from the softer core taking spin off. So if I can based on a couple of warm-up swings, it could be ugly. But, uh, oh, you turn the camera on and he finds the strike straight away. <laughs> so we'll see, you know, AVX, they launch their 15 degrees, you know, spin 4-2, this is a 6-iron. So that is a very low spin for a 6-iron. I'd be you know, wanting it to be up around the 5,000 mark, close to that. But we know the AVX takes spin off. So if I then go, I'm going to the other end of the scale, I'm going to a Pro V1X, So similar launch. similar launch, 15, 5,200. So we've just gone 1,000 revolutions in spin just by changing ball and it is not launched any higher. So that's certainly something to bear in mind you know, when you're looking at golf balls and looking at you know, what kind of flight you have. If you have a flatter flight, then you do not want to be playing a soft core ball. Um, if you've got a high ball flight, uh, then either something like a, a Pro V1, you know, standard Pro V1, if you're looking at the tightest range, left dash, or even the AVX from a softer core point of view, a softer feel, that'll bring the flight back down. Lovely. Uh, question coming in from, I'll, I'll let you attempt the name on that one there, about the AMTs. Oh, that's, um, Evgeny. <laughs> um, so can we explain the difference, uh, explain the true temper AMT shaft line and how it differs from Dynamic Gold 120 or Project X60? So the AMTs, AMT stands for ascending mass technology. So any taper tip set of shafts where they've got so what we call discrete, discrete lengths where you have a four iron shaft, a five iron shaft, a six iron shaft, rather than a, a, a kind of unitized shaft, a parallel tip that's trimmed to length gets very slightly heavier as you go down the set from you know, longest iron being the lightest and shortest iron, wedge shaft being the heaviest. But they progress about a gram, gram and a half per shaft. So you know, seven to 10 grams per set. The AMT, the principle is that the long irons are lighter to make them easier to swing and then the short irons are heavier for more control. Um, but what you do get is you get about a three gram progression each shaft. So for a set of seven shafts, you're looking at 20 grams. So the, the principle being that the longer runs get easier to swing is great if your energy and your technique suffers into the longer runs. But the problem is that most of the time you end up with either long arms that swing well and heavy hard work short arms, or short arms that swing well and long arms you can't feel. So the, 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 the theory is great, but in practice, there's just, a, we feel there's too much of a strong progression in weight, but the principle is lighter, easier, long irons, but you'll I'm, not get the same stability. <coughs> through the I've set. only ever seen one set of those work for someone. Mm. And that was someone that had the red in the short irons and the black in the mid irons and the mid and long irons. So they right. used the combination yeah, yeah. of the lighter red range, mm. allowing them to 
not have that major progression into the short yeah. irons. Um, but it is very much the AMT. Anytime I've seen them and previously attempted to fit them, it's always been a case of it works for few and far between, and sure. normally it's a trial and error and pull things apart and start again. Mm. Or normally your longest iron's a six iron or maybe a five iron. But yeah, I think so. It, it's something, it's a you know, great theory. Um, so, uh, Alexander Ward, evening, gents. Good evening. After Fitzpatrick's forgotten weight in his grip apparently being the cause of his driving problems, how big a difference does four grams make in the shaft? Something you could test, maybe. Um, well, I mean, four grams, a, a grip change of five grams is about a swing weight point. So, um, with uh, Matt Fitzpatrick, the, the plug was underneath the grip. Um, so it wasn't a, it wasn't a counter core that goes through the top of the grip or something that was added onto the back of the club. It was built into the club and then grip tape and the grip put on top of it. So that's why he forgot about it. But it's a swing weight point. So do you want to test this or do you want me to? Do I can have a go. <laughs> so what we can do, what we've got is we've got a, a alcohol sensor that we're going to screw into the back of the club and uh, and compare how it swings with and without. So, and it's a, it's a bit of a, you know, it might be a bit of a tough one for you to physically see um, the difference, but I think it's something for Matt to explain what the know. change in the feel does. With the, uh, with the attempt we had at this earlier, I think it'd be pretty clear mm. as, to, uh, mm. as to how different it feels. So I'll start with the, the Arcos sensor in. Oh, I've actually timed it. I've had to work hard. So essentially with the, with the sensor in or the extra weight that, that Matt had in his club, it's heavier, but in order to make the club swing lighter and there's a sort of principles and theories that you know, counter, counterweighting increases club speed, but that's only really relevant if slightly heavier dead weight, the microphone's hanging off, um, slightly heavier dead weight, but a lighter swing weight actually works for you. It certainly doesn't work for everybody. And I'll take it out and hopefully find this a little easier to move. That's more the shape up the left and hopefully it stays there. I mean, okay, I've turned that over too much, mm. but. But essentially what, what it does is it just shifts the balance point a little bit. So um, I could actually feel the head yeah. with that one, I guess is the best way to, okay, yes, I've turned it over, but I think that was probably in reaction to the previous one where it, felt like it got stuck behind and I saw it go to the right but all of a sudden without the, the counterweight I actually had feel for the whole club mm. and then could release the hands as yeah. as required. Okay, this is something that we, we've been looking at very much with regard to grip weight so when we're fitting you would know, fit with you know a, a like a standard weight grip be it a, uh, a standard size or a mid-size trying to keep the dead weight of grip the same um, and then if someone needs a bigger grip a mid-size then putting the heavier grip, a heavier grip on if their preference is for a Lankin cross sign or a, a multi compound mid size or certainly a plus four um, to display what the difference is. And actually, granted in Fitzpatrick's case, it's a, it's a very small change. Um, he's also very, very minutely dialed in. So a very small change for him will have a probably a bigger effect than for most of us. But having said that, the principle is still the same. So it just shifts the weight position around and can, can turn a club that swings well and performs well into something that you can't feel ahead and, and you've lost all timing. I think that's the thing for him, especially in driver, where he is mm. on his limit every time he gets driver out of the bag. Yeah. Any slight change in that just completely, completely destroys mm. him. So, uh, Ray Eccleston, can we suggest possible alternatives to a VA Slay for use in a hybrid R Flex around 85 grams? Ooh, so Slay tip responsive, doesn't swing that light. No. So it's a fairly heavy swinging shaft. Um, I mean, if you're looking for an alternative to that, I mean, actually, you know, the, the NV, and depending yeah, on what you're wanting NV, from it. Yeah, very nice. Um, although NV, you know, very good value, although you will have to build the bottom half of the grip up because the shaft narrows down a bit quicker. Um, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't be too far off. I think certainly if you're wanting something with a bit of response and a bit of feedback to it, then, then that would certainly be the first thing that springs Does to mind. Does the DI come out in a, do they do that in the 85 in the regular? Just thinking from a similar a feel little, point of view. Yeah. Um, I know it's a tiny bit heavier dead weight that way, but feel wise would be pretty similar. Yeah, um, slightly stiffer than the tip, but yeah, similar kind of weighting. 
Um, I outside of that, I mean, you don't get too many 85 gram responsive tip no. hybrid shafts. So most of them tend to play quite sturdy. We're seeing a few more lighter weight ones. Um, but you know, maybe the C6 Black would be another alternative yeah. potentially um, to that for you. Uh, Kevin T, evening. At what swing speed would you consider fitting a stiff shaft rather than a regular? Now, this is something that we get asked quite a bit. I shall let Matt uh, take the lead on this one. Um, it really, there isn't, there isn't really ever a speed mm. where that's the case. Because um, a lot of it comes down to more the timing and the weight of the shaft. So you might find that a stiff in a Ventus Blue 5, for example, works really well for you at 58 grams, but then actually that might, to be to hit the 58 grams to get that, that timing, you might actually find that it's a regular in a different brand. Mm. And then it comes down to just a feel point of view of, okay, do you prefer the fact that maybe the Ventus feels a little tighter because of the, the fact that it's the stiff, so there's a little bit more material down there, or actually does the regular give you a better spin number? Mm. That then you start mm. to get into more the the real technical differences of, of the fitting side of things of what do you what are the perfect numbers you're looking for for the yeah. person in front of you um, but the, the simple answer is there isn't really a change from one to the other yeah and the pro problem is there's no industry standard no. so and you know, you, one yeah. brand or kind of model within a brand's regular is a stiff in one of its other models um, but equally speaking the difference in the actual difference in flex between a regular and a stiff is very small if you take the actual CPM the cycles per minute value that, that a lot of um, stiffness is kind of grad is graded on you're looking at three to five percent of the of the actual bending of the shaft so it's more about as, as Matt said you get when you get the weight right so there are a lot of times between a modus 105 regular and stiff where you know it's if someone suits a slightly heavier weight you go in the stiff at 106 seven grams and if they need a few grams lighter you get down to the reg it, it doesn't affect the flight or the performance or the dispersion but if the reg swings better they're going to hit it more consistently so that's really and it, other than a, a preference for a, a stouter feel, um, where you know, ultimately if you have that option of a firmer feel and a softer feel that both swing well, you'd aura in that way, but that's really where you'd use flex. Uh, Kevin Phillips, hi guys, any fittings with the new whiteboard? It seems tip heavy, swing up is one to two points heavy on my scale, thanks. Well, you're, you're perfect one to talk about this. <coughs> um, it's something that I have to say when we, mm. we got them in and we were a little bit I guess skeptical of them initially, we we're expecting mm. it to be a bit more old school whiteboard where it is that sort of very stout feel down mm. the bottom end and therefore we were expecting them to be quite tip heavy. And then we built the demos up and started testing them and probably over the last month, they've probably shot to the top of, into yeah. the top five at least of shafts we've had go through, mm. go through the building. Um, they've been one of our more popular ones. The slight variance in the mm. feel as you go between the flexes um, oh, this is something we, 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 we actually messaged Mitsubishi about. So we got our demos in and between the kind of the, the regular, the stiff flexes, we noticed a very different feel and slightly different balance. Yeah, swing weight definitely changed through yeah. that, the, 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 the softer shaft, the softer by yeah. classification. Mm. Um, shafts were a little more tip heavy than yeah. the X and then into the TX got a little more up and mm. sort of mid and then upper mid even mm. in in the like the 63 TX for example is very much a mid high mid balance shaft whereas the the SR's mid mid low you can really yeah, feel yeah. that snap at the bottom end with yeah, the SR. We felt you could really feel a bit of, feel a kind of kick fairly kind of what, what seemed to us midway down on the softer flexes but then at the the X and the TXs were really stout all the way through. And we actually went to the point of going to Mitsubishi and saying, have these been engineered to perform differently through the flexes because they feel like this and this is how they swing. Um, and they went to the engineering guys and they said, have they, they, sh they haven't been built differently. And then they came and they, they showed us the bend profile, the EIs. And actually in the stiff and the regulars, the, the mid to upper section is a lot softer, but they're, they're all very stout in the tip. So, um, so they do feel and swing differently because of the construction. So it's a little bit of if you're in the stiffer flexes, they're more kind of neutral weighted and very stable all the way through. And in the softer flexes, there's a bit of feedback, a bit of kick through the handle section, but then a proportionally a little heavier and more stout in the tip end. So it depends which one, but very long winded answer to yeah, we've a really interesting shout. Yeah, we've seen some success with them in the fairway as well in this mm this generation with the slightly softer flexes we've seen some yeah. real success in the 
in the uh, in the fairway woods. Yeah, well, the old whiteboard was a proper <laughs> flank in the fairway woods. Yeah, yeah, you had no chance. Uh, Tom Vaughan, um, the question, or well, the comment is, want to see Simon outdrive the beast? You will be waiting a very, very long time. <laughs> if I have a go with even one if, arm. Even if you <laughs> chip one away, I'm still not going to outdrive it. We'll, we will, okay, at the end, we'll both give one a tank and you'll see how far past me he is. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mauser 63, why is Simon kneeling down? <laughs> um, very kind of you. Yeah, I'm just shrinking with age. Uh, uh, so. uh, Ricky McIntyre, good evening. I'm looking to order gloves from GX. Uh, normally a small with foot joy, should I go a size up? I think that in principle, they they might come out just fractionally smaller than some other gloves, but I, I, I've worn a, um, the, the ignominy of a cadet medium in, uh, in foot joy, because uh, I don't have long fingers. Um, but the, the medium in the GX is absolutely perfect for me. So I think if you're a, if you're a small and it's not getting on the tighter side in a foot joy, then the smaller in the GX would be absolutely fine. Uh, so, uh, Can you just pop those TVs uh, the back, screen on? back on? Sorry. Um, I love turtle, ah, the turtle returns. <laughs> <laughs> I love turtle, good to see you, good to see you again. Evening both, thoughts on why even roll E12 consistently short on UK winter greens? Well, actually, so one of the things with that, with the depth of weighting, what it can do is if the weight sits back a lot, it can actually add lofted impact. So weight forward, you don't get a, a, a kind of the, the weight, so rather weight back can actually, as you swing it through, could start to swing underneath and the weight at the back pushes it forward slightly. So you can dynamically get a little bit more loft with a deep weighted putter. Especially um, with longer swings because of the yeah. fact that it's winter, you've yeah. then taken it back that yeah. little bit further. Well, yeah. a lot further. A lot further, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And especially when now we've got sand all over our greens. But yeah. that, that would be the one thing that I would say is likely to make a difference. Um, as, as Matt says, with how much of a swing are you having to make now? Um, that's just going to pop it up a little bit more. So um, that that's probably the only thing it can be, I think. Yeah, mm. yeah. for me, yeah. that would be the only, the only slightly logical answer to that. Uh, James Denny, how stiff does the graphite design ADDI5X play in the driver. I didn't even think there was such a thing. Only a 6X is the 5X like a tipped stiff. Um, oh, structurally, it is. It's engineered to stiffer all the way through, so it's not like just a tipped uh, tip shaft. It's a couple of grams heavier than the stiff. Um, and really, I, I, it goes back to what we were saying earlier. There's, you know, the the X in the five is going to play like a kind of a strong stiff in the six because there's just more material in the six. It's going to play a little bit more stout. Um, but you're still going to be in a sort of 58, 59 gram shaft uh, in the five and a 65, 66 in the, in the stiff in the yeah. six. So um, it will play structurally more stable, but relating it to a heavier shaft doesn't really do it justice. You'd have to look at, say, something like the, the IZ5, where that will play notes to be a little bit softer in the tip than the DI series to give it a true comparison. Um, so in terms of how stiff does it play, um, for, a, for a sort of 50, um, rated shaft in terms of sort of weight rating. The DI is still fairly, so it's, there's a bit of kick through the middle, but the tip's pretty stable. So it should, it should play with some control. I think control. it would still be similar to mm. like a Ventus Blue, especially the newer version, the 2.0. Yeah, yeah. Similar to like a Ventus Blue 5X equivalent. Mm. Um, it's something we both picked up on when we hit that new Ventus yeah, Blue, yeah. is that it was- Definitely felt more. It, you could feel a lot more, you got a lot yeah. more feedback from the, from the shaft than you did in the original. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Sashman Swag, great name. Uh, if I'm getting fit but don't always play the same golf ball, what, which should I play? Drive a swing around 100 miles an hour with quite a low spin tendency. Any ideas? Loving the content as usual. Thank you very much. Um, well, if you can make in the comments, let us know which couple of balls you play, just so we can get an idea of what what you're contrasting between, uh, and then we can maybe kind of say whether one might, based on that um, flight profile you've given us there, whether one might be in inverted commas better. Um, I mean, I think, I mean, really, you know, one of the things we're always asking is what do people play when they come in the fitting bay? And predominantly, it's a tight list most of the time still. Some yeah. variation of a Pro V mm. or a, often the answer is uh, Pro V or similar. Mm. Um, so at which point Wh we I get, I get white and round occasionally. Yeah, you uh, do get the, yeah. the, the comedian that makes yeah. that comment. <laughs> but um, it's a, bit a, consist a consistent ball. Yeah, what, whatever you play, a consistent ball is the most important yeah. thing. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm. When we get the, um, if you're able to send those through, when I see those come through, we'll, we'll loop back to that question and then give you the pros and cons. Ah, usually in a Bridgestone X or whatever I could find. <laughs> <laughs> so the whatever you can find at 
well, now, now spring is upon us, um, starts to change. I think winter time, there's an element where, you know what, it's going to stop on the green where it lands. Um, assuming you're in the UK and they're experiencing the same wonderful conditions we've had <laughs> over the last few weeks. Um, I mean, just actually finding it not plugged in a fairway somewhere is great. Um, so it, it less, less important when conditions are poor, but actually if you're playing the Bridgestone X, um, you know, that's a slightly lower spin ball uh, if it's the Tor X. So if you're, let me go back to the original bit, uh, 100 mile an hour with a low spin tendency. So um, if you're not low launch, um, then you know something like the the XS, or there will be a softer feel, or just pick the spin up a little bit more, or you know depending on where your spin levels are, Previa One X, or um, you know there are a lot of balls that will spin just a little bit more than that. But it depends what kind of feel you want from the balls. To yeah, what's best. at that club speed, I'd mm. be slightly concerned of the X being a too low a spindle because it's not necessarily yeah. the highest launching thing on on planet Earth either. No, because true. ultimately, was yeah. a Bryson ball. And, and the X is something that I've noticed over series, over the progression of, of the design of the last few models, has definitely got lower spin. No to be lower spin after the last few. Yeah, so, so the last mm. two, Bryson was basically the main prototype mm. user. What's he so playing now? That. He's, he's still in Bridgestone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, he switched to the left dash X for a bit, but okay, I think he's gone yeah. back to the Tor X. Got it. Uh, Chase King, will bigger grip size help with tension in the forearm? Uh, in theory, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's the really, really cop-out answer, but it, it's, it's the theory behind it and certain, you speak to certain people in the industry and they will say yes is the answer to that. Um, assuming that bigger grips still fit your hands, mm -hmm. but if you get to a point where it gets too big that then you can't get your hand all the way around it, well then you start to cling on again because mm -hmm. you're hanging onto it rather than controlling it. Um, the answer is probably a lot of trial and error. Well, I think it's, it's, yeah, I think there's, you know, depending, again, depending what, you know, I guess, base glove size you're wearing. If you're in a, a medium or a smaller, you know, standard size grip with, you know, standard up to a couple of extra layers of, you know, pretty, you know, neutral size for you. If you're in a, you know, kind of a medium, large, or large, you're, you're getting pretty close to a midsize. So that as a kind of base marker can guide us to what, in theory, kind of core size should suit. Um, but then you get the variables around kind of, you know, bottom hand, you know, hand dimensions, sort of length of your kind of index finger on your bottom hand, um, and how then how much tapering you need. So th there are lots of layers to it, but essentially, if you're in a medium, large, or large, mid size, anything less than that, standard core. If you're in an XL, well, getting a grip that doesn't go stupidly heavy in a large size, that's then a challenge. But um, as a kind of baseline, that's, that's a good start point for you, I think. Uh, Driving range king, is there any benefit to having two shafts for your driver, i.e. max carry for winter golf and max total for summer, or should a properly fit driver do both? Probably depends where you play your golf. Oh, is it, that's, actually this is true, there's, there's winter and there's winter. Yeah, because um, yeah. it's that, that thing of if you're, uh, you know, if you play inland <laughs> parkland golf in the winter and then you're mm. someone that plays down on the coast a lot during the summer, then yes, absolutely, there's a justification <coughs> for having two variations because that's two very different golf, style of golf. But actually, if you're someone that plays the same course every week, if it's somewhere that dries out a lot. See, I, I would say, I, I, unless there's a massive temperature variation, yeah. then a different shaft, but then you're always in two sets of clubs then, and then all kinds of, you know, Prob yeah, it's actually prob problem. Problem, problems with your marriage and things kick off from there. <laughs> but, um, but I would say if you were going to go there with it, I would go two different lofts of head yeah. because ultimately the shaft is the bit that, it, that, that gets you to deliver the head consistently and suits the way you swing and you move. So if you've got that bit right, then actually you're just looking for a lower flight and a higher flight um, or a slightly different spin profile. So um, it's not something, so with the, the UK, the conditions we have here, I don't change mine um, because, you know, it, it's, I don't play much in winter for a start, but um, I, I, it's something that there could be, as I say, in the, the situation of a, a Lynx Golf to inland and kind of heavy wet conditions versus kind of firm and fast and running, then you're really only wanting the pitch of the flight to change. You don't want you to have to change much else. So you could play two slightly different lofts of head, I think, to create that rather than changing the shaft. And then you just screw one on or you just screw one shaft in, but yeah. then just switch it over. Or, or have a, a like, something like the Callaways, actually their hosel system's great. You can change the loft, you can go up two degrees down one. So you've got a you know, 
two to three degree variation in actual loft without changing the head. So something like that would definitely be a consideration. And without a major change in face angle. Yeah. Because that's one of yeah. the other things that Callaway, in that situation, Callaway would be better for, is most of the other brands, you start to add a lot of face change as you start no. to change that loft. Whereas Callaway, okay, there's a marginal amount, but it's far less than, yeah. than the other options out there. Alf World, I'm assuming it's pronounced. Uh, can shaft profile, <coughs> assuming you mean bend profile here, affect club path or is it just weight? Well, I guess there's a caveat to it in that yeah. the answer is actually indirectly, yes, it can. I, I, I think in that, um, so I've asked you a question, I'm just going to jump in. No, no, no. You... In that I think that the how the player reacts to the feel of the shaft can then affect what they do. So as just changing shaft profile and bend profile, can that affect your swing line? No, it shouldn't, shouldn't do. Um, balance point and dead weight affect how you and the club interact, so kind of heavier drops underneath, lighter you can lose plane both ways around. But I know if I go to a softer feeling shaft, I don't swing it the same, I'm going to start to move the club differently and probably a softer feeling shaft get more from the inside because I feel like I'm going to hit it left. So indirectly, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I guess we did it with me with the, uh, when we looked at iron shafts recently mm. for a set that I'm probably putting together for this year. We, I've been a Modus 130X guy since I was 14, 12, 12 years at this point. Um, and I kind of wanted to just have a change for the sake of having a change. And we went yeah. through the process of trying, you know, LS 6.5, LS7, Project X, just straight Project X, 6.5 and 7 and then dynamic golds and okay they all sit around about the NKBS tour they all sit around about that same number mm. but with such different bend profiles I couldn't keep any of them on the planet and we put the modus back and it was like oh and there's there's a golf swing again but you're also very very sensitive to balance point very yeah. sensitive because of the the enormous amounts of acceleration rate um, the moment it gets for you if it gets behind you then fetch it and shut it down so some of that I think is the balance point change um, a little bit but equally speaking yeah you know you and I both react to the, the feel of the shaft quite a lot so from that side of things yeah it will it will change your action mm. cool breeze good name sounds like a sounds like a good bar somewhere <laughs> somewhere warm on a beach um, hi chaps do you tend to see flatter lie angles in wedges versus irons um, my wedges seem to trend left of target uh, also how often should they get loft and lie checked on the iron set in general uh, the loft and lie check on the iron question probably depends on where you practice and mm. how much you practice if you're someone that practices on a concrete based driving range and you hit balls twice a week uh, the answer is probably every six months at least mm. if not in shorter intervals than that. I mean, certainly, yeah, if you're doing three <coughs> if you've winter, got, yeah. If you've got a set of forged, forged heads and you're practicing all through the mm. winter, it's probably every three months. Um, as for wedge lie, I think it depends on how you use your wedges. Um, I've always been someone that plays them a degree flatter than, than the irons, uh, but I play a lot of shots where I play hands low, yeah. especially on the shots where I start to take pace off, my hands get a lot lower. So at that point, if I don't play it flatter, I start to see it go, go left. Mm. Um, but then I know, and I've fitted individuals that are very much hands high, so then we like to keep the, the lie angle following the trend of the irons. I think it's very much a person-to-person a -person thing. Yeah, I was going to give a kind of little bit of a <coughs> visual on this as well. In that... Oh, good old face plane tilt. Yeah. <laughs> so in the wedges, when you go, the, the more loft you get... The more you change the lie, the more the, the, where the face points change. So if you've got zero loft, um, then you can change the lie wherever it wants and the face is still pointing directly at the target. But the moment we add a bit, I'll put it, make this a little bit clearer, the moment we add a bit of loft, add a bit of lie, sorry, add a bit of loft and then change the lie, that now, and all I've done is tilt it, that's now pointing left. And then flatten it off, that's now pointing right. So when you get to the wedges, that's why there's more of an effect and why more people, you know, left is more damaging because it takes spin off um, and, and you know, distance control is harder. So therefore, or more effective. So therefore, um, you know, upright in wedges is more damaging than it is anywhere else in the bag. But there's also an element where technique wise, a lot of play. 
you know, when you're playing wedge shots, don't tend to stand up and, and hit that way, um, putting the toe down and needing the lie to be upright. What we also tend to do is to get, especially when you're in a bunker, kind of sit down there, get, get down to the ball so the clubber can work underneath. So what you're doing is you're dropping that handle even more and shallowing the plane out. So putting the toe up even more than normal. So for a standard, standard shot, we can turn through and release up here, hands finish high. For a wedge shot, you tend to turn, shall I do it this way, rather than kind of swinging through and up there, tend to keep the hands lower and work that way. So all the, you know, the best wedge players tend to see hands low, almost into that left pocket. And what that does is that keeps, I exaggerate, keeps the club working that way and the toe sticking up. So for a kind of little kind of short wedge shot there, the handle's always staying low, so that sticks the toe up. So it's more likely to be that you know, you're more likely at, um, in wedges to have the toe sticking up and need a flatter lie than anywhere else in the set. There you go. If you mm. wanted the full explanation, there you go. And you've yeah. got the, uh, the yeah. demo to go with I it. I need to get my back moving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Daniel Winterbottom. Hi, gents. Do you see mini drivers becoming more widespread? I much prefer small-headed drivers of the past. There's certainly a lean we're seeing more come through mm. we're seeing more in the not necessarily as a replacement to the driver but as a replacement to the three word so the 13 and a half mm. i saw quite a, a few last year 13 and a half mini drivers come through that someone had got to replace their three because either their three wood wasn't giving them enough off the tee or they're a course where they needed that something to hit that was a little shorter but they could trust where it was mm. going to go um so there was a few i saw a few 13 and a half degree mini drivers um I think that there's a, there's a, it's a twofold though. I think the answer is I think they're, if they weren't done as in inverted commas, hot shot products, I'm sorry, walking a bit. Um, and by that I mean that's sort of where, um, like the likes of Taylor made, it's a small volume kind of mid year, you know, it's out on tour, everyone's seen them, get them out there, and then there's one run, sell out, done. Um, that's part of the problem in terms of actually like for us there's no point us getting a demo in by the time we get the demo they've all sold out so um so and i know we've seen tight list i had one on the list hit the list um recently um you know is that just is that just something that's going to go on tour because they don't want their players playing a tailor-made mini driver um there there are a lot of players i think that kind of benefit from that smaller head that can trap it a little bit um i think the thing is you've got a fairway wood will always outperform it off the ground. So if it's as a put it in play off the tee, strategic teeing off club, then then I think there's merit there. Or if some actions that get trapped onto it that the bigger club heads just spin up and flare up, then I think there's a real merit to it. Um, as to as to how much value there is mainstream of having one in the bag, I I, I just don't see that. I think the shorter shafts on the fairway woods and the and the shallower profiles are, are better as fairway woods. Um, what do you think? No, I'm, no. Uh, yeah, I'm completely with you on that. I mm. think, <coughs> I think there's certain people that it's it's helping with driver, mm. but I think it's few and far, few and far between. I, I think the, the almost the problem is that when they work for someone, they really work for someone. Um, so, but they're just access to them and you know being able to you know, being able to actually test one and try one before you buy it is nigh impossible, especially from a fitting point of view, yeah. which is creates a bit of a difficulty. <laughs> Uh, and Sashman swag with his, uh, if it's round in winter, it's getting whacked. <laughs> it's very true. Um, Mark Sefton, if the weight of an Arcos sense in the grip can affect the swing, would it not be best to fit, best to first decide on a grip and then go through the fitting? Um, well, that's sort of kind of twofold on that is that anything with an Arcos sensor either attached adds a bit of weight um, or in the grip cap adds length. So there's a compromise to be made somewhere in all of it. The one that's built into the cap is, well, it's only a couple of grams? Yeah, it's three and a half grams, yeah. but it is three eighths of an inch in yeah. depth. So you then start to, that can start to mess around with swing weight mm. and okay, then do you cut the shaft shorter to a, mm. have it end of grip be the same length and there's less to grip onto and you've got it. There's a lot of things mm. with the Arcos stuff that really start to cause some questions and confusion as to what the best way to go about things. Yeah, and then when you've got the, you've got the sensor in the, in the top end, a lot of people will end up gripping, essentially treating the sensor as part of the grip. I, I think it is an interesting one. I think you'd, you'd be looking at, I mean, for us from a fitting point of view, I'm looking at, right, dynamically with the club in the May, in general, what have we got to do to get it optimizing performance? And then 
you know, when you're looking at, you know, you'd need to look at grip size, certainly at uh, an early part of the fit to know kind of roughly where you're going from that standpoint so you can test with a relevant grip size and grip weight. Um, but it does, it does throw, as far as saying a curveball, but a, a, an extra bit of complexity to the build because what happens if you then decide you don't want them in anymore, um, having used them for a little while. Um, now the ones you can unscrew, you can just unscrew and, and, and take off and, and that's all fine. And those are probably the most versatile ones, but the ones that are built into the cap, you have to make a decision, do we build it like it with a normal grip in case they go back, the player goes back and decides they can't be bothered with the Arcos anymore um, and I want a normal grip again. Because if you do it for the Arcos grip, the gloves are too short. So it, it, it does add a layer of stuff to the build, <laughs> which from our point of view is a bit of a pain. Um, but equally speaking, you just got to find the best overall solution. I Often think. it's just a conversation mm. with the mm. whoever, whoever's clubs they are, a client in that sense, and have that, have that conversation with, with them and say, right, are you fully committed to this? Mm. Explain the whole process of, look, if we, if we go down the route of the Arcos sensors built in, we're going to have to cut them this bit short. But if we then change the grips, you're going to have short clubs. As a rule, if you explain that to them, you come to a pretty sensible agreement. Mm. As a I rule. <laughs> don't put them in. Um, <laughs> uh, Robin Morton, have you tried the Kirkland ball? Got them for the winter, don't care if I lose them. Seemed to spin up a bit with driver. And um, we did have a bit of a test. I think there's one, one of them in the bay. Yeah, I mean, look, durability was certainly an issue, but they did spin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Iron, iron, was it through the bag? Was it just irons notably we saw? Irons and woods notably. Wedges for, were... For the whole bag. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, but wedges, <laughs> yeah. wedges were very similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it was maybe mm. one 200 revs versus a Pro V1X. Mm. Yeah. But as soon as you got up into the mid to long irons, as soon as you started putting some real speed into it, mm. yeah, it really started to not get out of control, but noticeably more spin. Yeah. Sort of four or 500 more in the mid irons and then... I kind of like that Mizuno, the RX they did, that yeah. span about 800 revs more than anything else. The, the only problem with that is because of the cover they had to put on to get it there. It, it, like with the Kirkland, that's part of the reason why it spins. It, the cover grips that much more, but then it tears, so it doesn't last very long. So, so this is a bit like the new Chrome Tour in the initial testing we've done with it. Very limited. Mm. Um, it is seriously spinny, but... It leaves a mark on the club face every time. Mm. There's not a lot of core <laughs> of cover left after. Oh, it does it? it does it your speed? <laughs> <laughs> Anything does it your speed? Uh, Richard Skinner, by any chance you can test the Velocor Plus blue against the TR blue in an AI smoke triple diamond? Certainly, sir. Uh, whilst, uh, whilst Matt's getting those, uh, Golf Nerd 3, after changing grip size with layers of tape, uh, would you set it up as a completely new club or do you just build to his or her old swing weight? Um, so it depends how many layers of tape. So if you add, generally if you're adding one or two layers of tape, there, there's, there's so little change in, in base weight. If it's the, the standard kind of two inch, uh, two inch tape, it's such a small change in dead weight that no effect. Once you go to four layers, that, that, makes, that makes a difference of a badder swing weight point. So then you're into that kind of four odd gram change in terms of actual base weight. We would generally match the swing weight. Um, so yes, there is a slight up, uplift in total weight of the club. Um, but in that instance, in that instance, you try and keep it as similar as possible. Uh, you know, there is a very slight effect, but ultimately there are only so many things that you can control. And the tolerances on shaft weights are, are going to be a gram or two as well. So in the grand scheme of things, from a tolerance point of view, that sits comfortably within where the rest of the clubs in your club head and shaft and grip all fall anyway. So um, a, grip, a grip tape amount change. Um, would be you know, you, with the tolerances on grip weights, you, you're potentially looking at the same kind of effect. So it's only when you're up in kind of five to ten grams and more, then then yeah, there's a serious question to be had on grip. Right. TR TR, TR blue six against Bellacore plus six. Oh. Yeah, I grabbed the S, so you've got half a chance. Ah, oh, that's very kind. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just just because it might be an X, I could still hit it. <coughs> yeah, you just hit it. Right. So I guess in terms of comparison, one will have a look at numbers, but I think also then the feel difference. Only nuisance this has a mid-size on it and the other one doesn't. It's 
So the, the TR, because of the weave in the butt section, actually plays a slightly higher balance than the, than the standard, the original blue. Um, so, you know, certainly a fairly stout feel um, through the upper midsection, but, um, but not a, it doesn't swing heavy. I forget it's actually quite a nice feel. <laughs> well, for you, it doesn't need tip balance. It's yeah, great. Yeah. No, that was necky. That's yeah. That's got left on it. You can have a go with that, and then we'll switch them over. Right. That seems way too high. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm five or six. We've well, got about a seven seven degree angle of attack. <laughs> Toey, so that won't spin. <laughs> 1800. <laughs> now, please do not compare club speeds, it's not fair. <laughs> I think we all know what that quill, what's going to happen later on, is going to be. I'm going to be outdriven by about 70 yards. Yeah, see, so I find with that, I, I can't feel the club head, but I, I use a pretty tip weighted shaft, so that. that not going to be too further away because it's not counterbalanced, but yeah, I, I don't have anything to hit against with that. But a very stout, stable feel. Oh, make sure we're not missing anything coming through. Whereas I feel like for you, the initial testing we've done with the new Velocor Plus, mm. this will definitely feel a little more like something you're used to in the sense of there's less in the top section it's got a little bit more in the bottom half yeah so i mean straight away we know the balance point changes a little bit this is it's not heavy bottom end but it's a little more lower mid yeah so i can use that weight in the bottom more it's interesting it's a slightly the tr definitely has that um for me a kind of a tinnier sound a tinnier feel that harshness in the top end. This one, you definitely get a little more give through it. But um, yeah, this, this one swings fairly well. Yeah. I, what I have noticed <laughs> is that very low spin out of this. I've noticed a really, versus original series, definitely a little, little less spin, but that consistency of spins being very, very good. It'd be interesting to see what happens if they go down the uh, route of the original series of doing the yeah, blue. So for an open face, that's pretty good on spin. Yes. If they go down the route of doing the blue, the black, and the red, uh, well, they, they will. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> it'll be interesting to see what happens with the black in the. Well, I think, I mean, being historically the low spin. For me, with that, I mean, I don't see how much lower it can go. No, low spin or low. In that sense, it's it's tip end feel as well. I don't know how they can get much more down in there without it. Mm. Oh, that's one. One. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so that's the shortest drive he's ever hit. That's, that's sure. the one you should have gone up against. Uh, I can beat that one. I can beat that one. Yeah. Yeah, for me, that then gets stuck behind and I've got to try and save it. Yeah. Okay, I've done well to save it. There's, there's, there's a definite sense oh. of loading through this, and it might be because potentially that bottom end stability, I think that's more bottom end head stable than original version, um, just in terms of how it kind of clings onto the club face. Um, yeah, okay, I'd agree with that. But I think that's where the spin stability across the face has been very good. Ooh, that almost squared up all right. Oh, it's just so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for both of us, you know, spin rates sub 2000 on the squared off ones. That was with an um, X as well. You're right. Um, <laughs> no, but, that was probably think, one X. Yeah, I think it's, it's a very, it's, it's certainly an upgrade, I think, in terms of performance. I think if you're in, the only, the only danger if you're in one, they will be doing red and black, that's inevitably going to come at some point over the next sort of year or year and a half, um, is just being aware of it dropping more spin. I think yeah. you know, if you have a blue and the flight's good and you get the Velocor Plus, then you might need to up your loft by a degree. Um, just to counter that lower spin, I would say. Totally agree. Uh, just, uh, let's see. Uh, make sure I'm not missing anything here. Uh, right, so Guillaume Suarez. Uh, hi guys, what were the main differences you found between the 430 Max and the Max 10K in slower swing players? 
Well, there, were, there are two that I, I can think of. One being that the 10K with the weight back, some slower swing players actually, if you have a bit of open and close to your action, a bit of rotation, it's harder to square it up because there's more weight sat away from the face. So that, that's certainly something that I've seen a mm. couple of times with it. Let's be honest, that's something we've seen. Mm. Okay, I know this was about thing, but just generally yeah. across the board, we've definitely mm. seen, um, we've seen this, this year in particular with a lot more heads mm. going carbon and majority carbon. Um, we are seeing that heavy front plate, heavy back back plate with the weight being further back. You slower swing speed, you start to see that disconnect and a yeah. lot of high rights will snap over lefts. Um, I think 10K is a little lower spin. Yes. Is a little bit lower spin, yeah. Um, yeah. Not drastically, maybe kind of a couple of hundred revs, but yeah, I've been quite impressed at how well it holds the spin, I think, for those. Uh, Nigel, hi Simon, is there a difference between KBS TD60X compared to TX60 Rainbow? Um, well, the TX is just that little bit more stout um, and you know, one or two grams heavier and it's got a rainbow finish. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the base shaft underlying is, is exactly the same um, to the original red and black series, it's just a paint finish. So. Um, so just it'll feel. I mean, they feel quite stout. I think those shafts are quite unique in terms of the way they swing and feel. Um, you know, have been asked a couple of times on on the Monday nights before is what's going to compare to it, and I always find that really hard because, like bend profile wise, you could find something similar, but yeah. feel and bend profile, it, it's a pretty much a one-off. They're very much. If I've done, I haven't done many of them, mm. but when I have, it's been kind of going back to that question at the very beginning about flex. I've dropped the flex yeah, yeah, down yeah. at least mm. one um, just to try and create the right characteristics for what we're looking for. Because if you play it in the equivalent flex, it just is not simply not usable. Yeah, yeah, it's just a very hard feeling shaft. This, this is a good one. Golf Nerd 3, controversial it starts off. <laughs> what do customers do? I thought it meant, I read it as when I was looking at sort of fitters. What do customers do during fittings that are your pet peeves slash annoyances laughing face with tears? Uh, hit too many golf balls. Yeah, yeah plain actually, and yeah. simple. That's the one. Yeah, machine gun. Yeah, yeah, it's the one I would I would say to everyone. If you're someone coming up to a fitting, have fittings, and maybe the results didn't necessarily go the way you thought they would, just make sure you manage how many golf balls you hit. If someone mm. says hit three or four with this, and then they go and grab something else, don't carry on hitting something else. Just yeah, yeah. just wait. We. We yeah, have, can I just hit one more? Yeah, we only have, take it out of the hands, yeah, we only have a set number of mm. swings that we can get from you mm. where we can get good data and then it yeah. starts to deteriorate. It normally drops off around 70 to 80 shots is when you start to see a, a, yeah. a, a drop off. Just the number one and that, I'm sure that goes for all the fitters here is just, yeah, that, I think, just yeah, be I think aware we, of how many shots you're If hitting. we want to take something out of your hands, it's for a reason. <laughs> um, not uh, and, and actually, most of the time, if we've changed something, we're actually, sometimes we're testing the limits of something to see right. I think it seems like this trend is a good or a bad trend. If I push it a bit, you know, sometimes you might only need to see the one swing to know, right, I've found the limit. Um, so yeah, if we want to take it out of your hands, just let us, yeah. And my other one would be people not necessarily being open in their thoughts on a, something so you for example mm. if i give if i give you this mm. and say do you That's like it and you yeah, straight away don't like the look of it does or it you come, don't, does it come in a different color or you don't yeah. like the you mm. know you don't like the feel mm. of it within one swing i might look at the numbers and go well they're great but you might say i hate the way that swings just tell the fitter because yeah, it gives yeah, them yeah, so much true. more information mm. than yeah. them trying to study the numbers because i could stand there all day and go you know look at that last one i hit there it was 12.4 on the launch and 1900 spin, I could stand and go, well, that's great numbers. Mm. But actually, I don't like the feel of that because I've got to try and save it. Yeah. So mm. it's, it's very, it's, it's always one of those. It's a back and forth and just be very open with the oh, fit. I was going to say, yeah, probably, probably mine, thinking about it, is being mute in a fit. Talk, talk to us. We, yeah. we need your feedback. Um, so it's not a case of hit a shot and look at us and go, make magic happen. Um, <laughs> we've, we've got to know what you like, what you don't like, why you like it, why you don't like it. Um, in the same way that you, know, you go to a restaurant and somebody ask about wine, you kind of, if you tell them what you like and you don't like, then they can find something that will go with your meal nicely. And the same thing for us, um, in that you know, we can really tailor the club to you and visually feel-wise, what you do like and want. Um, so, yeah, be, be open, talk to us, yeah. 
Uh, so I didn't think that was that harsh. No, I thought no, we were no, quite no, kind. No. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to say, I hit it further on the course. There we go. Uh, there we go. That, that is another one. I hit yeah. it further on the course. Um, Niels Axelsson, do you see more slower swinging players dropping three-wood? And if yes, what's the typical bag setup? Yes. Um, I, I mean, I, I absolutely. Um, and just a very quick one, we are getting towards the end. So um, there's some, um, we will crack through. We'll do, go quick fire to get as many of these done as possible. So any questions you want to ask? Fire them in, five or six minutes left, uh, we'll, um, we'll get through them as much as possible. Um, I think, you know, not necessarily just slower swing players, I think, you know, being, getting enough launch and flight to get, get trajectory. Fairway um, woods are becoming yeah. lower and lower spin. We're seeing mm. a lot of, <coughs> whether it's five wood or whether the old four wood, as much as they're scared yeah, yeah, to call yeah. it a four wood and call it a three HL. HL. <laughs> um, it's definitely becoming more and more popular and we, we're using it more and more because it's becoming the, Mm. You know, it's becoming the option. So I would, yeah. I would say that that's probably the first thing we drop. We see changes, drop of the three wood, in comes the HL yeah, or the, doing or a the lot four wood. Of four wood, six wood or five wood, seven wood or four wood, seven wood uh, as fairway options rather than three, five, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I say not just slower swing speeds. Um, <laughs> yes, I hope you answer golf nerd. Um, <laughs> Paul Jennings, I've got a pitch at 43, approach at 49, sandwich at 54. Do you see any issues with these? Are there more standard degrees I should consider? Uh, it's a that's a gapping when mm. with a fitter or pro um, on a launch monitor is probably the answer yeah. to that because it if you're someone that swings it at 65 70 mile an hour and actually they're all gapping wise yeah. they're all going to be 10 12 yards apart there's no issue with that mm. but if you're someone that's up with me at 100 with a pitching wedge you're going to have 30 yards between each of those clubs at which point there's a few clubs that need to go in there um, so I would say the honest, th there's no right answer you to that. You swing at 100 with the pitchers and you're probably not very good with your wedges either. <coughs> oh, that's harsh. Um, <laughs> that's all right, you're just going to hit 100 yards past me in a bit. So. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, gapping. Just look at the distances. Um, if the gaps are too big, then, then yes, you could potentially add a wedge and uh, reduce the loft gaps down. Uh, Mauser 63, great show as always, chaps. Thank you very much. Uh, thoughts on Rory's recent lower tee height strategy. In your opinion, could we all benefit from considering tee height more often? Um... His was purely because of the, sh well, his was in reaction to him changing shaft length, going back to 45. Mm. Yep. Um, he started to lose strike at the higher tee because he was then hitting up on it even more. So he yep. dropped that tee height to try and find a more. Yeah, it's getting swing direction more down <coughs> the line. Getting, it, getting him inside and up. more in yeah. the right place. Um, but yes, I think it's something that we've all just kind of, it's that generic, well, I'll take the pink tee or I'll take the orange tee, yeah. depending on if I like to see the ball and hit up on it or if I mm. like to be traditional and hit what feels like hit down on it with driver. Um, it's something we should all be more aware of. Yeah, I think um, just the whole tee high, it goes better, isn't always the case. I don't tee mine very high. Matt tees his very high. It's, it depends how high above the ground your club head is. A bit of athlete's foot spray and, and test a few out and see without adjusting your swing where how high at the face is your natural strike mark and finding what finds that centre spot most regularly without you having to manipulate, manipulate yourself is probably the best answer to that. Um, Daniel Winterbottom, thanks for the help. A very trappy in general, that's maybe why mini drivers have worked in the past. Currently got four slash seven wood and prefer these off the tee over conventional driver. Yeah, smaller head style, trappy action, totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah. mini driver makes sense. Uh, Tim G, you agree on the Callaway Chrome Tour line with the X version after around the balls battered. Very long ball though, they are good for ball speed. Um, felt hollow on putter, swapped back to 24 TP5X. Uh, uh, yes, that is their issue. <laughs> Feel the short, I mean, good ball speed. They definitely, they've, as with Taylor made this year, the latest TP5 and 5X are definitely quicker. Yeah. Um, they've gone after Titleist from a ball speed point of view for sure. Um, but yeah, the Callaway does suffer. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's exactly as we described it when we tried it out. Um, yeah. I mean, it's even you go back to sort of 588 when you go back that far. When, that was when I first switched to a Callaway ball. I, I used it for, I think, three weeks and then switched mm. switch back to. I think it probably would have been Pro V at that point because I just I couldn't deal with that hollow, clicky. Yeah. Even now, it just gives me a bit of yeah, shudders down the spine just yeah. as a thought. Right, quick, quick, I've <coughs> got literally a couple of minutes left. Um, Fujika, this is the Tim G. Fujika Pro 2.0 Torspec version aligns closest with which current Fuji Ventus offerings? Mm. I would say it's black. The 2.0 is the heavier, yeah. stiffer, um, the more stout version of it. And maybe blue TR, possibly, but they, they swung heavier. Um, so blue TR slash black. I think, I think technically, yeah. if you ask them, it's Matori. Yeah, it's more of a Matori X1, uh, F1 series. Yeah. yeah. Um, 2.0 or Pro 
series is launching later. There's another ver version of that later this year. So, um, uh, Richard Skinner, amazing. Thanks, guys. Pleasure. Tom Ashmore, evening, gents. Is a five handicapper, OK ball striker, looking at Strix on irons. Should I consider both the ZX5 and ZX7? Yes, because they are very different in their launch profile, mm. in their launch characteristics. Five will spin it a little less. Seven will, sp as much as they're not high spin heads, they yeah. will spin it a little more. Um, seven will probably launch a little lower. Five will launch a bit higher. So yes is the answer. I would say no matter where you go, test them both. Mm. Yeah. Because you'll see a big difference. Uh, Joseph Farabee, I'm wondering if, I can, if you can make sense of this. Um, I recently switched from a Stealth 2 driver to the G430 Max 10K. Never seen the left side of any ferry, but now most of my shots are going left. Probably shaft or swing weight related, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, the 10k is quite you know, is going to be quite a heavy head, and just depending on that balance ratio, that could affect and make you have to fetch it. And depending flip on it what over. shaft you've got, and um, if it's yeah. one of their outers, okay, you should be okay. But if it's one of the others, it will swing quite heavy. Mm. Uh, Robin Morton really missing Stuart's t-shirts. My eyes aren't. <laughs> I kept seeing things jumping out of them like a 3D poster. But, yeah. um, Matty, great live, gents. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you, I hope you're continuing to feel better. Um, Minsock Park, I know we're seeing Minsock soon. Uh, previously used to have off days where I wasn't playing well, not optimal but playable. Right now I'm happy with my swing but I have days where I feel like I completely forget how to swing. How do you deal with customers having one of those days if you ever encounter this situation? The answer is it happens and ultimately it's going to happen to all of us. Some of it is just not setting your expectation level too high for the fitting. You will have you know, shots rounds, days, fittings where you're not at your best. But actually sometimes that gives us a really good indication of what we need to allow for. So don't try too hard on the fit. Um, from a fitter's point of view, if you or we aren't happy with that we've got the best result for you on the day, then we will always say, you know what, come back in, we'll cross-reference the specs, because ultimately there's, there's no point trying to force a result out of the fit. So yeah, just, Sometimes Completely it just happens. Yep. Um, so right, last two, then we'll hit the driver. Best drivers to try 90, 90 mile per hour swing speed? Such a difficult oh, question. Oh, there is something. Cobra, Cobra Dark Speed X, that's yeah. been a really good Yeah, lowest swing speed, definitely really good. I'm going to definitely try that one. Um, uh, Mark Griffin, tailor-made drivers sit flatter generally. Not always. Um, certainly the, um, the, the, the low plus, spin ones do. Yeah, the plus or the low um, spin do, but the others are. And uh, Minsock, see you soon, absolutely. And Joe, Doug, great content as always. Getting fit in a few weeks, can't wait. Joe, looking forward to seeing you. Right, very briefly before we go, we're both going to batter one, and you're going to hit it miles past me, because that's what people want to see. You can have that one first. No, I'm going to hit my own one. Oh, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've got to, I've got to try Should and get, get the one eye, any, any advantage possible, <coughs> physically I'm at a massive disadvantage because I'm old and weak and slow. Right, Just don't hurt yourself Simon. A little low on the face, I'm going to do one That's more. Right, I'll give you a couple of chances, I'm going to go and grab, uh, <laughs> going to go and grab something out of the workshop. <laughs> you know I'll hit that one well then. <laughs> To give it one more. I've got to get a three on the front of it, otherwise, because otherwise he's literally he's so far past me through the air, it's going to be pitiful. Right. Have you got one where I'm going to have to open your shoulders? Oh, look, that's straight. 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6 on the path and face to path. Oh, look at you. Find the fairway. How boring. Right, that's, all I've, <laughs> that's all I've got, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, right, let me hit driver first and then I'll see if I can beat you with a one iron. You see, I would, I would say that's harsh and unfair, but it's disappointingly true. Oh, it's just... <sighs> little spinny, little low on the head. Oh, let's tee up a bit more. See, I'm, I'm a good point. boy and I'm not going to swear live. I'd like to point out this isn't my driver, there's the excuse. That sounded hit. Yeah, 185. 185. Look at that utter outrage. <laughs> Only the 50 yards. So, in I mean, the it air was different. futile me trying because you were still going to be 20 yards past me through the air, even if I absolutely 
got everything out of it. Now, this is, this is an interesting one. This is a bladed ram one iron. No, you haven't hit it. Oh, go on, me have one, one more, more and then, then we'll, we'll wrap it up for this off. week. Yeah. I agree, if it's not in the fairway, it doesn't count, Druss. Hello. Very good point, oh, very good point. That one is not in the fairway. <laughs> that one, that one's a, a finger stinger. For, that, look at that. For reference, that's proper. That was the toy of choice there. The proverbial butter knife. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for all the interaction. Been, been great fun having Matt on. A um, bit of variety, um, raw power, and, uh, and somewhat lacking ability. But <laughs> um, no, great Thanks. knowledge, <laughs> uh, Matt. Um, Matt, I mean, we, we are going to be doing some more videos where Matt and I will be doing kind of first look tests on things. So when we're getting new product in, where we're literally just going to set the cameras up and film us just talking about product and what we find through it. So um, that's something that we've always enjoyed doing. So it's been great having you on. Thank you for. Thank you for subbing in. Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. We will be here next Monday at 6 p.m. You never know, Stuart might even be here. <laughs> um, and uh, look forward to seeing you then. And thanks for all the questions.